Our first, uh, our first speaker this morning, uh, we are very, very excited to have, and it's um, Chief Delbert uh, Wapas. Um, Chief Delbert is somebody that, uh, for me personally, I, I, I've looked up to uh, for a long time, and at the, at the, you know, the height of Idle No More, and I, I don't want to get political here, uh, he was a leader that I, I really listened to, and uh, he was somebody that I, as I watched um, Delbert, you know, he, he really uh, uh, aligned himself with many people that, um, that I respected, and that's the first contact that I had, um, had with the chief. And at that time, I listened a lot to, to the many chiefs uh, and, 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 and uh, other people that were around talking about treaty and the treaty right uh, to education. And this morning, we are very, very uh, glad uh, to have uh, Chief Delbert uh, Wapas here to uh, present to you on the treaty right uh, to education. Please welcome Chief Delbert Wapas. He had two pages of introduction and he only gave me five seconds. <laughs> Just kidding. I thought Ryan was going to say if elected after his long tirade there. But Conchie, Conchie, Conchienesis, Chris? Okay. Pamwes, Kamatita, no Agumagantik. In it in an Askamakutawi, no. Kote mi uta kote guak. Mina kiti mno kap mo te na magua guk mamo pon. Mina kia kiti go te kap kap ma piek. Hip na na askum ta ge pei tu teik. Ego me pei si to skat me ego mum. Sna magi guk. Mino ni gani guk te kap ni gani tsk kap ni gana pi tsk. E pei si to skai guk. Mina and paint two to make Tanze Kagi was quito to make Oma, Stamagion. He got my gun to cup my teamic, no agomagantic. Kiwagomagan no, me jet moins to tamne hion. Maga penata at the moon. Tanza Kagi sapchi tat, Kiwetze. I'm told I have 45 minutes, but Ryan took my 20, so I got 20 minutes. I'm honored to come and say a few words. But first, I want to thank the Creator for bringing us here in a safe way. I also want to thank our elders for the opening prayer and those elders who are here with us who prayed from where they're standing and sitting. And to all the educators and administrators who are here and perhaps some of our First Nations leadership and our non-native First Nation, uh, non-native leaderships who are here, I thank you. My topic that I'm supposed to be talking about is Treaty Right to Education. And I'm going to talk from my own personal experience, from my lens, from my eyes. And what I've felt and what I thought I saw and what I think I see today. I'm from Thunderchild First Nation. I'm a graduate of the University of Saskatchewan Indian Teacher Education Program. I finished my Bachelor of Arts from SIFC, my education from ITEP, my Master's from U of S Education and Administration. But I also have my most important education, which is from back home and through my journey. I don't know why 
I was presented the life that I was. And one asked me, so how was your life? Did you have a good upbringing? And depending on who's listening, they may think, man, this guy had it tough. And others will think, I wish I had that life. But growing up, I thought I had a tough life. Not realizing that today is the tough life. Yes, I had to figure out a system at a very young age on how I'm going to keep the heat going in a wood stove. So my grandmother and my two sisters, Isabel and Florence, we didn't freeze in a house during winter. Not being able to make lunch, but having to run home to start a wood, wood stove and to cook and race back to school. Not being able to go out at night, being told the stories why you shouldn't be out at night. At 13 years old, I don't know why I was at the auditorium where Sagawa School is today. At a Treaty 6 gathering, listening to elders after elders talk about treaty and our responsibility to it. Senator John B. Tatusis standing on a stage, table set up row by row by row. Couple el uh, adults fooling around while he was talking. He kept on with his speech. And then he stopped. You see these two? And these were well-respected individuals. They're going to amount to nothing because of how they are. And he used them as examples. And then he started talking about what he was talking again. And as time went on, <coughs> there were a lot of trials and tribulations falling down, making mistakes, picking yourself up, learning from that mistake, not learning from that mistake. No father passed away before I was born. Grandfather passed away when I was 11. But I was blessed with people that were coming into my life that were either that older brother or that uncle or that father figure that helped guide me to today. What does this have to do with treaty? We all have to ask ourselves, are we not umania? Who am I? And where do I come from? What's my story? Because many of us, we don't know. We can still tell We can still know. Some of us just exist, and we don't care about our past. If you don't know where you came from, there is no way in heck you're going to know where you're going. I've heard many speeches. And I've heard a lot of hypocritical people. That will stand up and say something and will do the opposite. 
But when it comes to treaty, and your responsibility to treaty, it's not about you. It's about those kids and those kids that aren't born. What is your responsibility? Who am I? To understand that you're an oscapios as an educator. As teachers, you're oscapios. Oscapios umge. Whether you're a woman or male. So what does that mean? That's some catch that's a tumaga, oscapios istot. What does that mean? Some of us may understand or have an understanding or some of us are like, I don't even know what he's talking about. But when it comes to our kids, how many of us refer back to our contracts as a teacher. Well, in my contract it says I'm supposed to be here at 8.30 and I'm gone at 4. What would an Oscapio say? Go to a Sundance Lodge and tell me if you see, if you'll ever hear an Oscapio say, I put in 12 hours. We've been colonized to think corporate. Treaty is about who we are. As Nehiok, as Enoch. What is the spirit and intent? A lot of us as Indian people fail the spiritual part of our treaties. And some of us have a total different interpretation of the intent to a point where we don't even concentrate on what's the intent. Why did they negotiate treaties way back when? What does that mean? The covenant. Why did they use prayer? Why did they use the pipe? Why do we still exist? Why does our treaty right to education still exist today? And what does that mean? You know, how many of us walking outside have paid attention to ants? You guys will probably think he's lost it now. No, but how, how many of you have looked at ants and have taken the time to stand there for at least five minutes, ten minutes, then quiz to really observe ants. You know, if you really look at those ants, that's who we are as indigenous people, as indigenous peoples. Because each one of those ants have a role. All these principles of relationship, kindness, how they work with one another, how they support with one, support one another. 
you see those, one of the set of ants hauling things, carrying things. You see the other ones protecting. You see the other ones doing something, something else, something else. Now ask yourself this. And we've seen this. I, I've seen it. I've seen some people just go like this to an ant pile. There goes their ant hill. What happens when you do that? You come back and it's rebuilt. Now let's look at ourselves as First Nations people. We're dealt a deadly blow. I can't believe government did that to us. What do you mean they're not going to give us $2.6 billion for education? That means we got to shut down our schools. Oh my God, what does this mean? Our education system wasn't built around money. Our education system was built around ideas was built around teachings, principles, values. Think indigenous. Unpacking the curriculum, understanding the outcomes and the indicators. What does that mean? You could do a whole unit, a whole yearly plan on ants and how you're going to incorporate that into your class. And we got to understand how we look at things and put things into perspective. We go into our schools. That school is sacred. Because to me, a school is like a lodge. And we have our sacred children that are in there. And some of us come in there with our attitudes. Now if the school is a lodge... Think of it as the Sundance Lodge. What kind of attitude do you have to have to go into that lodge when people are coming there to pray? And you're the Oscopios as a teacher. And your administrator. is almost like your elder or your pipe carrier for that school. Unikanapo. So the teachers who are the uskapeosak are the ones that are trying to gather all this good thought, this good energy. So it all goes in to the pipe that's being filled for the administrator to do what he or she has to do and pray for on behalf of the school and the children. So why is there conflict? How in Omnia? Who am I? Where do I come from? And that's related back to treaty. We shouldn't be devastated by money. In Thunder Child, we started a land-based program called Mup Matsun. Good life, good living. And our kids are taken out to the land. 
to understand and start understanding who they are. We don't want to build, we don't want to build machines, kids with no feelings. Memorize. Okay, I passed this class, I passed this class, and not retaining anything. We want kids to know where they came from and set their path on where they want to go. So it's important we know who we are. Treaty is our responsibility as an individual and as a collective. And we hear, you know, our children, they're crying. Some of them, we don't even take the time to know where they come from. Showing up at 9 o'clock. Taking the time to understand their story. And appreciating how they were able to make it there at 9 o'clock. Getting mad at them because they're late again. So what is treaty? To learn the cunning of the white man? For us to interpret what that means. To me, treaty is about us controlling our own destiny within our respective First Nations. It's not dependent on government to decide what's going to happen in Thunder Child First Nation. It's for us to decide what's going to happen in our community based on how we want to see things. And just because the curriculum states what it does and we're told that this is how we're supposed to be, decolonize your thinking. Start thinking Indian. Start thinking Nehio. Anishinaabe. Do things that are different. I ask myself, what's different between Thunder Child School and Turtleford School? Brown faces? White faces? Was that the intent? of Indian control of education, treaty right to education? Or was the spirit different when our kids came home in 72 from Turtleford to Thunderchal? We want our Indian control of education. 1972 paper was done. We want our kids to learn about who they are, where they come from, to retain their languages, to tell their story. Treaty wasn't negotiated overnight. It was prayer that was put into it to realize what we have today. So I challenge each and every one of you to define for yourself what treaty means. To know what your responsibility is, what your role is as an educator. It's not about you. You're part of the equation. But if we want to continue existing, we have to connect to our children and be ready for those children that haven't come yet. So with that, thank you very much. Now, hi, hi.